What is going on guys? Denzel Crocker here coming back at you with another video and today we are going to be doing a realistic rebuild of the Jacksonville Jaguars. Now I know what you're thinking. First of all, I just said Jaguars really, really strangely. You might be thinking that, but also what you might be thinking is, hey, Denzel, this is a really good team. What did the Jaguars need to do to be rebuilt? Well, their defense... Well, that might be one of the top five defenses unequivocally in the NFL. Their offense is a complete other issue. Now, without injuries, you do have guys like Allen Robinson making their return to the team. But that offense really isn't all that good. You have the emergence of stud running back Leonard Fournette, who was drafted in the first round of this past year. But outside of him, that offensive line really isn't anything special. And Robbie Blake Bortles isn't exactly the quarterback of the future for the Jaguars. So I think we can make some changes to this team. I think it's a great candidate for a team to be realistic rebuilt, realistically rebuilt. And that's who are we going? Uh, that's who we're, I just, I literally just had a stroke. We're going to rebuild these guys though. So this is the team that we're working with. Hold on. Let me go ahead and press Y auto reorder the depth chart and welcome back. Allen Robinson. Love to see it. We also have Keelan Cole. Now, Keelan Cole had a really, really good week last week uh, but at the time of me recording this. D.D. Westbrook's here as well. Rashad Green. I mean, there's a decent number of usable players in this team, but the real issue here, I think, is this man right here. And we're going to be doing it realistically, so we're most likely not going to be trading Blake Bortles, but whether he's the answer at quarterback or not, I'm not sure. I am probably looking to replace him. Mercedes Lewis is very old as well, so we have to be playing for the future on that. And we really have to focus on upgrading this offensive line because Patrick Omame, AJ Cann, and Jeremy Parnell are not going to work. Cam Robinson's a rookie, though, so maybe maybe he can progress and get better, probably. Defensively, though, it's really, really good. However, I'm not exactly sure what we should do because in simulation, Dante Fowler Jr. is not going to play. I mean, Dwayne Smoot's not going to play. Abery Jones isn't going to play. And these are all really, really good players that are just like, that are rotated in often uh, in the actual Jacksonville Jaguars team. But, I mean, in Madden, they're not going to be. The cornerbacks are sick. Jalen Ramsey, A.J. Boye. And then safety, Sean Gibson's not bad. And, you know, Barry Church is okay. Of course, we have uh, Paul Pozosny, Miles Jack, and Telvin Smith at the linebacker. I mean, this is such a good team. But I think the first step is just going to be simulating to the midseason mark where we could have the uh, opportunity to re-sign players. And then I'll probably see you guys for the playoffs. Hopefully, Blake Bortles can get us there. All right, 5-2 and two at the midseason mark. Allen Robinson is our top free agent. We're currently uh, in the lead of the division by one game. Do have some coach XP to spend. I'll probably spend that on, I don't know, offensive line maybe. I usually like to spend it on defense because it's easier first. We're going to need to address the safety position, I think, before long. But I think O-line for right now. And then uh, maybe defensive line for the next one. Then D-back, something like that. But Allen Robinson's a free agent, as is Paul Pozlesny, Marquise Lee, Aaron Colvin. I don't really want Josh Lambeau back. So I've re-signed Marquise Lee and Allen Robinson. I really don't want to bring back a 32-year-old Paul Pozlesny on anything more than a one-year deal. And he wants a two-year deal, but... Do I really want to be paying an 85 overall left outside linebacker? I moved him to left where he went up, uh, I think, a couple overall points. Uh, and Miles Jacks played middle linebacker. But do I really want to pay him to play two more seasons where he'll likely be uh, regressing into an 80 overall? Probably not. I want to look to replace that. And then Marquise Lee, I think, is a really good addition to the team to return. And he, I think he's definitely faster than Allen Robinson, in my opinion. I guess it's not really an opinion thing, but I feel like he's faster. I don't know. Don't really want Josh Lambeau and Aaron Colvin. I'm not ready to deal with right now. He could potentially go and play safety, but I will see you guys for the playoffs. So we have made the playoffs going 10 and 6, which was good enough for first in the division by a wide margin. We'll see the stats. That's not the stats. That's the news. My first time doing this looks like clearly Russell Wilson won MVP. Hoping for Offensive Rookie of the Year for Leonard Ford after Blake Bortles threw for 4,000 yards, 26 touchdowns, 21 interceptions. Very odd season. Rushing Leonard Fournette, about 1,200 yards, 12 touchdowns. Not really a good season for him by any means. 3.8 per carry is not good. Receiving, 
Uh, Allen Robinson almost had 1,200 yards, nine touchdowns. Led the, that led the team, despite him being a, a number three in catches. Blocking, the offensive line did not allow that many sacks. Defensively, Miles Jack led our team in tackles with 138. I already saw a stat that blew me away. Tackles for losses, eight from Malik Jackson and Marshall Darius. Quarterback sacks, 23 and a half for Calais Campbell. Jesus. 13 and a half for Malik Jackson, 11 for Marcel Darius, 9 for Yannick Ngakwe. Dante Fowler Jr. even had 2 and a half, 4 and a half for Telvin Smith. That's that's crazy. Josh Lambo is pretty trash. But uh, show me Offensive Rookie of the Year for Leonard Fournette, even though I don't think it's going to happen, as Russell Wilson wins MVP. No Jags in there. AFC Offensive Player of the Year is Tom Brady. No Jags in there. Offense, or should be Defensive Player of the Year. Clayus Campbell, 23 and a half sacks, finishes at number 2. Miles Jack at number seven. Offensive Rookie of the Year is Deshaun Watson. Leonard Fournette at number two. All right. And then Defensive Rookie of the Year goes to Miles Garrett. No Jets in there. He's a 98 overall. Jesus. All right. This is what the XP situation is looking like. Did Leonard Fournette make the uh, Pro Bowl? Looks like he didn't. He just has a ton of XP for having a pretty good season. And he does have Superstar Dev. Uh, but we're going to be spending this XP upgrading our players. And um, 41K for Jalen Ramsey. That's surely a Pro Bowl. There we go. All right. Golden. I'm going to spend this XP, upgrade our players, and then see you guys for the divisional matchup. Excuse me, the wild card matchup against the 11-5 Los Angeles Chargers. Rashad Green, by the way, also made the Pro Bowl somehow. So I, he might have been returning kicks. He has 37K XP. He could actually be a really, really good player after this if I use it right. 78 overall, not that bad. Not great. All right, this is the team that you guys are looking at for the playoffs. Nothing crazy has happened in terms of upgrades. However, defensively, Jalen Ramsey is a 98. That is fairly high. But uh, the rest of these players just pretty much keep on trucking. We'll get there eventually. Can we beat the Chargers in the wild card to advance to the divisional we cannot. First round elimination. Not what you like to see. But uh, I don't think anyone expected Blake Bortles to lead this team to a Super Bowl. So, you know, we'll get the higher draft pick than we would have gotten if we won another couple of games or whatever. Dang. Okay, Paul Pozlesny has regressed even faster than I ever could have guessed. He's already an 81 overall. As he's getting worse in every single department uh, by a lot. So he pretty much sucks now, and he will be even worse if we were to offer him the two-year deals that he, uh, two-year deal that he's looking for. So I'm just gonna probably look to uh, get a better player in the draft. Josh Lambeau, I actually am going to look to resign because I think there's a room for development there. And Aaron Colvin, I think, could be a good fourth corner if it comes to that. So Aaron Colvin and Josh Lambeau are both back. I really have no desire for anyone else. We're going to see what's in free agency. We're going we're gonna to see what's in the draft. We have a number of picks. We need to capitalize and make the most of those picks. So this is a really interesting scenario because we don't pick anywhere close to the top. Pick number 23 in each of the first six rounds out of the seven. And there are a number of players that I really, really would like, but I'm not willing to give up picks to get them because of how good I think this draft class is. So we're just going to simulate to our pick at 23 and hope that our players have not gone off the board. And it looks like the player I wanted may, in fact, still be available. I was incorrect in my statement. He was not available. He was taken. The Bengals are offering me uh, a 2 and a 4 to trade down with them. So I'm going to trade down with the Bengals to the 42nd pick. And then simulate to that spot. And then reassess the draft board at 42. With this pick, I'm going to be taking Aaron Pearson, a tight end out of USC, fantastic top three skills, and blazing speed at 4.55. Incredible. Pretty good vertical jump as well. He's strong enough. Here he is, Aaron Pearson, 79 overall, ranked number eight in the entire class. We take him at 42. 86 speed, 85 catching, 82 spectacular catch, 83 catching traffic, 82 excel. 75 route running is not fantastic, but we'll get that boosted. This guy is a phenomenal pick. Huge fan. He is the successor to Mercedes Lewis. I think I'm going to be trading this selection down as well. Looking for a first next year, if possible. Um, although Cleveland 
It gives me an intriguing offer, as does actually the Colts are offering. That's a 2019, though. I, I think I'm going to do that. I think I'm going to do a 2019, unless there's a first anywhere here. Actually, I'm going to do it with the Lions. A 2018 three and a 2019 two. So a, a second round pick next year just to trade down one round to where there are players that I'd more like to draft. So that's what we're going to do. And uh, keep in mind that these players that we draft here will get their names changed to accurately reflect players in this year's draft class. And I think I'm gonna trade this third rounder down as well for 2019 second. Uh, Seahawks should be pretty good. We'll do it with the Bengals. Also picking up a 2019 six in the process. And there are some really, really good players I don't wanna miss out in this draft class. I'm just kind of worried about reaching right now when I can pick up better value. With this pick, I'm gonna be taking a well-balanced center out of Minnesota, Wade Leak. Plan on maybe moving him to guard. Decent top three skills. I think he's, you know, late fourth rounder. That's probably around where he should go. I'm going to take him here in the third. He looks decent enough, so he will be joining the team. Here he is, 74 overall, 86 strength, 77 run block, 81 pass block, 79 impact blocking. Yeah, pretty much about what you'd expect. I was just hoping for more. I was hoping for a development trait, which is kind of a weird thing. You can't really hope for quick. Well, I mean, you can always, but you more than likely will not get it. But just there was a chance. Figured I would take him. With this pick, though, I am taking Marquise Wakefield out of Cincinnati, 21 years old, super young, and phenomenal. Tremendous top three skills. Tremendous. 4-4-5 four, four, speed, crazy vert, crazy broad jump, super explosive, super strong. Here he is, and he is a 78 overall quick development, supposed to go in the fifth round. 91 speed, 88 catching, 88 acceleration, 87 catch traffic, 92 spectacular catch, 95 jumping, quick development. Ranked number 26 in the class. We took him at 106. I took this guy all right, when I was scouting him. And I'm like just randomly doing it. And saw this guy. I'm like, I have to take him. Even though we don't necessarily need a receiver. I cannot pass up on a prospect so good near that range in the draft. Absolutely had to take him at that spot. With this pick, I'm going Tucker Holmbriand out of Fresno State. Really good top three skills, tremendous combine. Supposed to go in the middle of the sixth round. We're going to take him in the fourth because we think he's that good. And he is another excellent draft pick. Ranked number 23 in the class. We take him at 119. 88 speed, 84 tackle, 85 block shot, 92 hit power, 83 pursuit. Quick development. I told you this draft is backloaded. Like there are so many really, really good players near this point of the draft. And uh, I'm okay with reaching for players like that when I know it's not actually in fact to reach. With this pick, I'm going Paul Schmidt out of Ohio. Good top three skills, very, very strong, athletic. Here he is, 74 overall, ranked number 65. We took him at 151, 91 strength, 83 run block, 74 pass block, and 89 impact blocking. So he's another developmental player. His awareness is really low, so that overall will skyrocket, which is cool. And um, I do want to trade back into this draft. We have a six-round pick, but I mean, after that, there are some players that I would like to draft that if they're still available, I'm going to trade up and try to get them. Here is my can't-miss prospect of the draft, though. Francis Fisher out of Washington State. I don't even know, like, who we would trade this to. This is basically Lamar Jackson or Michael Vick. A throw power, B-plus throw accuracy short, B-throw on the run, 4-5-9 speed, crazy vert, crazy broad jump, crazy three-cone and 20-yard shuttle. He's strong as well. This is an unbelievable player, and he's supposed to go in the middle of the seventh round. His overall might be a bit lower because he doesn't fit our mobile scheme, uh, or because we don't have a mobile scheme, but he's a tremendous player, and there he is. Quick development as well, 75 overall. He's ranked number 51 in the class. We took him at 183, and he has 76 deep accuracy, which isn't bad either. 72 medium, 87 short though with 93 throw power, 85 throw on the run, 79 play action, and 87 speed. This would be a ridiculously fun player to play with. Just so good, 90 acceleration, 86 agility. What a ridiculous player. Supposed to go in the middle of the seventh. And I do want to trade up and get one more player. So I think I'm going to try to make a move with the uh, the Eagles, maybe. With this trade, I am trading D.D. Westbrook and a fourth next year for a six and a seven this year and a one next year from the Cleveland Browns. I think that's awesome value for D.D. Westbrook, who we no longer need due to the emergence of that fifth or fourth round draft pick we took at wide receiver and some other really good receivers. So... I have these two guys that I want to draft, Zachary Flanagan, who I think is going to be just okay, but I'm really excited about Martin Heyer. Again, his name will be changed. He likely will be a backup, 
but he could be someone that develops and starts maybe in a year or two. Not that fast is my only problem, but he has good top three skills. I think great seventh round guy. Ranked number 132, we took him at 191. 83 speed, 80 zone, 80 hit power, 89 acceleration. He's really well balanced, just the 83 speed uh, is so bad that makes him pretty much unusable, which is unfortunate. But we didn't need D.D. Westbrook anyway. And uh, the seventh round pick, I can take that other guy. Or just, he's off the board. All right. Well, we'll pretty much just take a chance. Griffin Riley, we don't need. What position could we need? Rashad Chapman. He's a guard. He fits the bill. We'll take him. 71 overall, ranked number 131. Drafted him at 203. Not a bad player. We just didn't hit the offensive line jackpot in this draft uh, the way we might have liked. So that is unfortunate. But we had a tremendous draft overall. Really good players. Let me change some of these star players' names that we took to uh, actual names in this draft class. So the names we have changed is we got Hayden Hurst, tight end out of South Carolina. We got Cedric Wilson, receiver out of Boise State. Matthew Thomas, linebacker out of Florida State. We also changed quarterback Quinton Flowers out of South Florida. Wanted one of those mobile types. So Quinton Flowers is what's going to be working for us there. This is the team for season number two. I think it's looking pretty good. We're starting a bunch of rookies because I think that's best for progression, especially with some of the development traits that we've drafted. Quentin Flowers, Hayden Hurst, they're both getting action. Cedric Wilson is going to be the number four receiver. Rashad Green at number six. Keelan Cole at number five. Rashad Green, I know he made the Pro Bowl. Why is he receiver number six? Made the Pro Bowl as a kick returner, so let's not, you know, take that too far. Starting Michael Thomas at left outside linebacker. Still need safeties in a bad way, but the rest of the team looks pretty good. I'll see you guys at the midseason mark. I gotta go to the damn regular season first, or preseason. See you at the midseason mark, though. So we are 5-2 and two at the midseason mark. Mercedes Lewis is a free agent. Uh, I'm gonna choose probably not to opt back in on that. Because Mercedes Lewis is old, and I don't need Mercedes Lewis, because he's 34. I mean, that's, that's pretty much what it comes down to. Dante Fowler Jr. is also a free agent, as is Blake Bortles, TJ Yeldon. Basically, all the players on this team that started at one point and re well, I guess not Dante Fowler's here, but aren't all that good. Michael Rivera. Rashad Green's a free agent. Probably look to bring back Rashad Green. He's a good returner. So I brought back Dante Fowler Jr. and Rashad Green. Don't really want AJ Can, Michael Rivera, TJ Yeldon, or Blake Bortles. I know. Shocking. Just don't want Blake Bortles back on this team, so I'm not going to deal with them right now. But what I will do, as we are sitting tied with the Titans for the AFC South lead, is advanced to the playoffs. See you there. So we did not make the playoffs, actually, with this rookie quarterback. We went 8-8. Eight and eight. How does that happen? How do we start at 5-2 and two and then finish 8-8? Eight and eight? That is so disappointing. We'll see the stats and see how we didn't end up making the playoffs. And um, I'm not even going to blame it on Quentin Flowers. He had a fantastic season. 4,600 yards, 28 TDs, 18 picks as a rookie. Like, that's a pretty good season. Blake Bortles, of course, 4 for 5 for the touchdown. <laughs> Rushing Leonard Fournette, 1,381 yards and 9 touchdowns. Much better season with this new quarterback. I think that's interesting. Quinton Flowers ran for 332 yards and a touchdown as well. Chris Ivory had a touchdown. Receiving Marquise Lee, led our team in catches, 8 touchdowns as well. 1,100 yards for both Alan Hearns and Alan Robinson. Alan Hearns had 9 touchdowns, though. Hayden Hurst as a rookie, 72 catches, 735 yards, and three touchdowns. And the rookie, Cedric Wilson, 213 yards on 17 catches and a touchdown. Blocking, still need to improve on the offensive line. Cam Robinson let up a sack per game as Miles Jack led our team in tackles with 123. Tackles for loss will be 12 from Marcel Darius. And the quarterback sacks, we have three double-digit sackers in Calais Campbell, Marcel Darius, and Yannick Ngakwe. Love it. Interceptions, we have four from Miles Jack and Telvin Smith, three from Jalen Ramsey, two from Deshaun Gibson. And then force fumbles, four from Yannick Ngakwe, three from Marcel Darius, led the team, and then two for both Miles Jack and uh, Yannick Ngakwe in terms of fumble recoveries. As we do have one defensive touchdown from Miles Jack. He had a really good season, actually. Yearly awards, Tom Brady wins MVP. No Jaguars in there. AFC Offensive Player of the Year. How, wait, how many Falcons was that? Hold the phone. Hold up, hold up. I see three Falcons. No, I guess only two. All right, I don't know who else would have been there. But AFC Offensive Player of the Year goes to Tom Brady. Quentin Flowers is a rookie at number seven. Leonard Fournette at number nine. That's almost surely 
locked up Offensive Rookie of the Year, as no one is in the def- Defense Player of the Year running. Offensive Rookie of the Year obviously goes to Quentin Flowers. Hopefully he got superstar development. That'd be great. Hayden Hurst finishes in seventh, or sixth, excuse me, and Cedric Wilson at nine. And then Defensive Rookie of the Year goes to Victor Gates, as we have Matthew Thomas finishing at number four. So we do have a lot of XP for some of our players. Did uh, We get a Pro Bowl nod for Rashad Green again. Looks like not at all. But a ton of XP for Quentin Flowers. That'll go to good use. And then defensively, please, a lot for a lot of players. Uh, we got a decent amount for a few players. Nothing too crazy, I have to say. But overall, pretty good. Pretty good. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and spend that when we get to uh, next season. But now, to advance to the offseason, where we're really going to have a good draft. Get offensive linemen, if we can't sign any offensive linemen, because that's actually my free agency focus. And uh, I think we're going to have a really, really good season for year number three. Will we win the Super Bowl? I'm not sure. Madden simulation so wonky. But that's what I'm aiming for, obviously. And yeah, Mercedes Lewis already down to an 81 overall with regression. And then Blake Bortles, what do you want? What do you want to be a backup? Eight mil per year? Absolutely not. Yeah, I'm gonna let the let, I'm gonna let the rest walk. So Ryan Shazier's a free agent. He's a 99 overall. Would be a good addition. Don't really want. Or, well, I, I want him, but I I'm not gonna do that. Not really that realistic. Jadavian Clowney, kind of the same deal. Uh, even though he would be a great successor to uh, Clayus Campbell, given the age. Tevin Coleman, don't really need him either. Jason Verrett, that's an interesting number three corner to have. He interests me quite a bit, actually. Andy Levitre too old. So Jason Verrett rejected. Andy Levitre accepted. Andy Levitre, the reason I went after him is even though he is older, I saw a quick development, which he's 33, so that won't really come into handy that much. But he is going to play, at least for right now, right tackle. We need help on the offensive line. That's probably what really hurt us in this past season. So Andy Levitre is going to fill in at right tackle. And uh, still haven't upgraded many of our positions. I'm going to sign a fullback at some point. But we need offensive line help. I need safety help. We need to have a good draft. So we actually pick third in the draft thanks to the Cleveland Browns and then 16th. So we're going to have a very, very good pick and a chance to get a real stud if we'd want one. We're going to take the pick. Now, I'm between players here. We got Dundrakis Hicks and Marcus Phoenix. Now, they're both similar players. Dundrakis Hicks had a little bit better of a combine. Marcus Phoenix a little bit faster. I like his top three skills a little bit better. Dundrakis Hicks is ranked at number one currently in the draft. Marcus Phoenix... Phoenix is number six. I think I'm going to go Marcus Phoenix. I'm feeling it more. He's an 80 overall. Normal development. Ranked number 12. We took him at number three. 88 speed, 82 zone, 84 hit power. I think he's a very good player. The question is, and we'll confirm this after the draft, uh, is Dundrakis Hicks better? And he was taken at number six to the Ravens, so we'll have to check that out. With this pick, I'm going Tyrone Sanford out of Nebraska. Center, can play anywhere on the offensive line. Great top three skills. Phenomenal combine. Here he is. 81 overall, ranked number 15 in the class. We take him at 16. 89 strength, 84 run block, 83 pass block, and 85 impact block. Just really, really, really solid, well-balanced. Awesome pick right there. With this pick, though, I'm going Harmon Bigby out of Western Kentucky. Go Hilltoppers. Decent top three skills. Good combine. I think he could be the eventual successor at strong safety. We're going to go with him. And he is actually, oh, interesting. 90 speed, 80 zone, 85 hit power. Really good where I want it to be. 74 overall only, but he does have superstar development, which is pretty awesome. That he hits that 90 speed threshold, which is the lowest that can ever go. I'm a big fan of this pick. He might be a year one starter, depending on how Barry Church looks. With this pick, though, I'm going to go Howard Crosby. I think he's going to fortify the defensive line. I'm going to move him to D-tackle. He looks phenomenal. I can't pass him up, even if he's not going to come in and just start. He'll be good depth, at least. Howard Crosby, interesting. He's a 72 overall because he doesn't fit the scheme. He has really low play rec at 54, which I love to see because that means he's so good everywhere else. 54 awareness. But you look at his stats, and they're just they're so good, I think, overall. Superstar development. He's going to be a higher overall defensive tackle, I'll tell you that much. 90 strength, 86 tackle, 83 block shed. 
76 power moves is a bit low, but 79 speed, 80 excel at 315. This is a phenomenal player. Really, really happy with that pick. Next up, still trying to get those offensive linemen. We're going to be drafting a lot of them. Charles Stanley is next on the board. Good top three skills, decent combine as well. Here he is. 76 overall quick development. He might be a little bit better than the last player we drafted. It was even more solid, but 85 strength, 81 run block, 83 pass block, and 89 impact blocking. That quick development is a game changer, though. He's ranked number 52 in the class. We take him at 48. These centers are always so good, and you can just move him to a different position on the offensive line. So I think if we keep taking O-line, we're going to be in a great spot. And that Bell, who just went to the Bills, we'll check out as well. So Ravens and Bills looked amazing. Just missed out. I guarantee you he's fantastic. With this pick, though, I'm going Grayson Graziani out of Lehigh. He looks like that beat his last name. Um, pretty good top three skills. Strong. That's what I'm looking for. 79 overall. Interesting. He's ranked number 18 in the class. We took him at 80. 91 strength, 86 run block, 79 pass block, 91 impact blocking. We have a huge variation of players in terms of their abilities all around the same overall. Now we, it's like we're going to be in a, a weird spot. What exactly do we do on the offensive line? I'm not entirely sure yet. With this pick, though, I'm going Sherman Lowe out of Wisconsin. He looks incredible. Supposed to go late in the seventh round. We're currently in the fifth. He looks just absolutely unbelievable. Amazing combine. Amazing top three skills. Here he is. 76 overall. Superstar development. And, you know, I, again, we're showing the draft. I can draft pretty well. Ranked number 56 in the class. We drafted him at 144. 88 speed, 76 tackle, 83 block shot, 86 hit power, 81 pursuit. 78 play wrecks really high. I wish that was lower. So his other stats would be higher. 55 awareness is horrific. Uh, superstar development as well. Really, really good player. He's supposed to go late seventh. I love finding players like that. Next pick, I'm going Chandler Light out of Appalachian State. Really good top three skills. Super, super strong. Here he is, Chandler Light. 77 overall, quick development. Ranked number 40, we took him at 174. 91 strength, 82 run block, 77 pass block, 89 impact blocking. Quick development too. We got some decisions to make on that offensive line. And then last but not least, we're going James Reed out of Iowa. He's a pretty good looking safety. Strong, fast, decent top three skills. Here he is, 72 overall. Ranked at number 100. We took him at 176. 88 speed, 76 zone coverage, 87 hit power to wrap up the draft. Nearly forgot. Draft recap. I wanted to check the Ravens. I want to check the Bills. Hicks is a 79 overall superstar development. All right. Uh, so that superstar development is obviously more valuable than the player that we took. That is what it is. We could have had Dundra kiss Hicks. And the Bills, I'm telling you, this defensive tackle is absolutely unbelievable. And he was taken to the third round. Here he is. Sherman Bell. 79 overall. Quick development. 87 strength, 80 block shit, 82 power move, 78 speed. Very, very good defensive tackle. So this is the team starting a bunch of rookies. And we're making some interesting decisions on defense, especially. You can see how the offensive line ended up going out. I tried to get the guys with the most development in positions to start. But, you know, couldn't do that for all of them. Didn't make the most sense. But we are starting at strong safety, Sherman Lowe. Who, if you recall... Played outside linebacker, but with his higher zone coverage, I thought that he would fit really, really well at strong safety. So that's what we've done there. We wanted to get superstar development involved. And then also, Harmon Bigby, another superstar development. Strong safety we drafted to move to free safety where he fits better. And he looks really good superstar development as well. Barry Church, older, getting worse. He's 31. You see his progression history. Just the regression hits so hard. And then Deshaun Gibson also going down. He's 29 years old. He's getting older. He's getting worse. So he's been moved to cornerback number six, cornerback number five, excuse me. And that free safety we drafted, Phoenix has been moved to cornerback uh, number four. So a bunch of changes going around, but I think it's for the best. Also, Marcel Darius is regressing as he is 29 years old. So he's getting worse. So I've made the executive decision to start Howard Crosby out of North Carolina. Superstar development looks absolutely insane. And if you recall, there have been some good North Carolina defensive players that have been coming into the league. You know, you look at Marvin Austin comes to mind. He jumps out of the table. But more importantly, Julius Peppers, Lawrence Taylor, maybe Howard Crosby is next. Yannick Ngakwe is up to a 90. And uh, I have really high hopes for this team. I think it can do really, really well. And uh, season four... 
is going to be really fun. But this is Season 3. This is what we're focusing on right now. Expecting and hoping for gigantic things from this team. 4-3 and three at the midseason mark. Jalen Ramsey's a free agent. This is not a great record, but everyone's kind of along the same point right now, which is not where I want to be. Got to re-sign Jalen Ramsey. That's pretty much top priority at this point. Yannick Ngakwe, Miles Jack, Keelan Cole. Keelan Cole might have to walk. I don't think we need him at all. Jalen Ramsey, Miles Jack, and Yannick Ngakwe all return. That's all we're going to deal with for right now. I think we're in a good spot. We need our players to develop more. I'm going to upgrade them right now. So hopefully we can make the playoffs here in year three. So it looks like we have actually advanced to the playoffs, going 10-6. and six. We get a first round bye. I'm not even sure how that's possible. Looks like the rest of the AFC South kind of shit the bed, if I'm being honest. We'll see the team schedule. Because we weren't looking so great at one point, losing. And then, uh, I mean, we didn't even finish crazy well of the season. We just uh, ended up making the playoffs. And somehow got a first round by. It looks like Dak Prescott wins the MVP. We'll see the stats as Quentin Flowers is a pretty good year. 4,627 yards, 35 touchdowns, 14 interceptions. Very good year. Rushing, Leonard Fournette, 1,377 yards and 13 touchdowns. Receiving, Marquise Lee led our team in catches at 98 for 1,200 yards and 6 touchdowns. Cedric Wilson, good season for him. Allen Robinson, 1,100 yards and 7 touchdowns. 8 touchdowns for tight end Hayden Hurst. A lot of wealth being spread around there. Um, let's see, not a whole lot of sacks allowed, but defensively, Tubman Smith led our team in tackles with 130. Miles Jack had 125. Tackles for loss, 12 for Malik, Malik Jackson led the team. Quarterback sacks, 9 for Calais Campbell. 8.5 for Howard Crosby. That's a pretty good season. Yannick Ngakwe had 7.5. Interceptions, 5 for Miles Jack and Jalen Ramsey. Harmon Bigby had 4. Tubman Smith with 3. Sherman Lowe had 1. Force fumbles. Uh, not too many, just a handful for the entire team. And no recoveries. I don't think I've ever seen that before. No defensive touchdowns either. How do we do in terms of defensive yards across the league? Second. So that's pretty good. Just not really forcing a ton of turnovers. As Dak and the 9-7 and seven Chargers, or excuse me, Cowboys. I see Chargers here with Phil Rivers. Dak wins MVP of the 9-7 and seven Cowboys. Quentin Flowers at number 6. And if, excuse me, we're at AFC. Uh, AFC Office Player of the Year goes to Phillip Rivers with Quentin Flowers at number 2. Leonard Fournette at number 7. Defense Player of the Year goes to Navarro Bowman. Okay. Telvin Smith at number 7. Damn, that's a lot of fucking Chargers. Joey Bosa, Denzel Perryman. You got Dorian Forte, whoever that is, and Melvin Ingram. Offensive Rookie of the Year that goes to Derek McCargo. See a jag there at Ross Bergen. He's a tight end playing fullback. And then Defensive Rookie of the Year goes to Dorian Forte. Harmon Bigby at 2, Howard Crosby at 3, Sherman Lowe at 4. Fuck Dorian Forte, dude. <laughs> that would have been so good for for someone to get on my team. It's not That's not fortunate. But we are going to simulate to the next week and see who we have in um, the divisional. It's going to be the 8-8 eight eight Steelers. What are the records, dude? How are we doing on XP? We got a decent amount to spread around. 28k for Quentin Flowers. How did you get that? Pro Bowl. Okay, I'll take it. No one appeared to have made the Pro Bowl on our offensive line, though. Actually, you know what? No, I think Cam Robinson did. 38K. I didn't even notice that. Is that a Pro Bowl? And quick development. Happy days. 38K for Big B as well at free safety. That's got to be a Pro Bowl appearance. And it is. Wish Lowe would have gotten that as well. 25K for Howard Crosby. Jeez, he made the Pro Bowl as well. So it was worth starting him over Marcel Darius. And Abra Jones, I think, for sure, as he's already an 83 overall. And he has 25k XP. And guess what? He's 23 and not 30, as Marcel Darius is 29. Abra Jones is also, well, he's 27. He has quick development, too. I didn't even, didn't even realize that. This is the team headed for the playoffs. We had this fella, fella I don't know, Charles Stanley, who had quick development. I totally forgot about him. I guess he was playing long snapper or something. But he made the Pro Bowl as a backup. I don't know how he made the Pro Bowl, but is he a long snapper? He's not even, I don't know how he made the Pro Bowl. He didn't play. I don't know how that happened. He was a backup left tackle and he made the Pro Bowl. And uh, I moved him to right guard and that's where he plays now. And he starts in the playoffs. Good for him. We have a bunch of really good offensive linemen that we don't necessarily need. 
Still playing the development. Year four is going to be a great year. We are playing it no matter what. And I think the team looks really good. We're, we're really deep at every position, like unnecessarily so. Like we don't need to be even close to as deep as we are. As it maybe Rashad Green's a guy that can come in and play uh, running back. Be a backup running back. How'd that sound? 78 ball carry vision? Doesn't sound great. Defensively, you know, things are looking okay. Not crazy, but not terrible. Howard Crosby, 88 overall in his rookie season. You love to see it. Things are looking good, though. We got a good group of guys. A lot of heart out there, or whatever coaches say. Going to the conference championship against the Steelers, or from the Steelers, to get to the conference championship. And here we are, facing now the simulation beasts that are the Los Angeles Chargers time and time again. Howard Crosby getting some XP. Did you go ahead and win defensive player of the week? Oh my goodness, two sacks. Three sacks, even. Who is this fella, Howard Crosby? Well, we know who he is, but three sacks? What a beauty. He's a 90. We definitely made the right call in playing him offensively and Quentin Flowers, my man. I don't know. I don't know personally, but Egan's, he wins Offensive Player of the Week with uh, four passing touchdowns. It's like 265 yards or about. And 11 rushing yards. Wow. That's great. Uh, we're going to use some of that XP. Get him to be uh, better than he is, which he will do some of that. He's up to a 91 now. Oh, my goodness. And I'm excited. Can we go to the Super Bowl here in year three? We do. Interesting development. This is big. This is big. Anyone win any awards? Doesn't appear that anyone did. I can't tell for certain. I'd have to check. We have the Rams in the Super Bowl. Yeah, Allen Robinson actually won Offensive Player of the Week. But uh, Casey Hayward... Seven tackles, a pick, and a touchdown for the Chargers. He won it. I guess that's a pick six. Probably what that is of Quentin Flowers. Super Bowl Miami. We are a 94 overall to the Rams 91 overall. Surely we should be able to beat them despite them having a superior record to ours. We have a better overall considerably so at that. So, uh, I mean, probably a loss. So, close game so far. We are down the 14 to 3. Going to need to come back in this now 14-6 after a field goal. Got to capitalize. And we score another field goal before half, but it's 21-9. And we should probably do more than fucking field goals, please. 34-12. And we turn over the ball somehow. 34-20 is the final score as uh, we lose the Super Bowl in year number three. But year number four, big things are coming in year number four. I can assure you that Rams are Super Bowl champions once again, Quentin Flowers, what'd you do? How many picks did you throw? Zero? How did we not finish? No one fumbled? How did we consistently not finish and win? It was like 28 field goals. Oh, I swear to God. I swear to God. Don't show me what I know I'm going to see. Josh Lambeau was perfect? I'll be damned. I don't believe it. I don't know how... I don't know how we couldn't finish. Scored 20 points. One touchdown the entire game. So we went and signed Jake Elliott and Matt Bosher in free agency to help out that situation uh, with his special teams, which didn't necessarily hold us back, but Josh Lambeau's got to go. And on the offensive line, I'm comfortable still starting Chandler Light because of his development trait, and uh, he's pretty good. This offensive line is going to develop, and I think we're going to see pretty big things from them. And I wish I could trade some of these players, but... They're just going to be good depth. Like, I don't know. I feel like Paul Schmidt's pretty good. But he's just going to ride the pond. It's just what's going to happen to him. That's his life. He's riding the bench. Defensively, things are also looking, I would say, very, very solid. Could use an upgrade at safety. But uh, we're going to ride the guys. Whoa, okay. Pause. We're going to uh, keep the players where they are, is is better way to say that. And, um... Calais Campbell is regressing. That's unfortunate. He's not bad, though. He's, he's going to stay out there. And we could use a better cornerback, number three, but I think it's all about the development of the players that we have in place right now, and we're going to do just fine. I could use a backup quarterback and a backup running back, and I really don't even care for the draft, but maybe we'll draft some of those guys. We're in the draft. We have the 31st overall pick. 
with not a whole lot of needs. I'm taking Brian Bryant because he has a stupid name. Here he is. And uh, he's ranked number 20 in the class. We took him at 31. His 74 overall is not indicative of his talent because he doesn't fit the scheme whatsoever. We're in a power back scheme with Leonard Fournette. He's a speed back, 54 trucking, bad overall. It doesn't mix. But he's going to be a really good backup, I think. Um, and he has a dumb name. If I, I don't think I mentioned that already. But if I didn't mention it, he has a dumb name also. And his name's stupid. And I have two more draft picks, and they're all running backs. First up, LaMichael Maxwell. He's ranked number 25 in the class. He's a beast. 79 overall, quick development. Uh, ranked number 25 in the class. Took him at 63. Looks very, very, very good. Should be an excellent backup. And now we... You wonder, what do we do at running back? Because I'm going to take another running back because what's better than two running backs drafted when you already have a superstar running back? Yes, another running back. Lester Motes, here he is. Ranked number 23 in the class. We took him at 95. He is slow development. Uh, but again, he has 56 trucking, so he doesn't really fit our power scheme that we have going on. But he's a very good guy. Maybe we run him at a little bit of return, man. Action, I don't know. So I don't really know what to do at running back because they took these guys and, I mean, it shows their overall kind of a little bit better here. But then you click on him, he's not really 78, he's 74, but he is a 78. Kind of see what I'm, what's going on. There's more like an 80 probably, close to it. Like 78 is close to 80. What the fuck am I talking about? Um, and this guy, this is my favorite pick of the entire dr draft. Okay, I'm, I'm, yeah. This is elite level material. You're never going to see anything like this. It's just the best that there is. Um, can they even return kicks? Brian Bryant is going to return kicks. And so is Lester Motes. All right. That's great. And then um, that means my backup can be uh, Maxwell, maybe. There we go. This is a good situation. This is a good team. They're going to come out here, and they're going to give 100%. I'd say 110, but you can't give 110% because it goes up to 100. You can't give more than the max. So, wow, I am just killing it right now. I'll see you guys for the playoffs. I'm going to simulate right there. And uh, hopefully we can have another Super Bowl appearance with this time winning the Super Bowl. Year four, we can only pray to Lord Jesus. Lord, you know, five pound, eight ounce, baby Jesus. All right, we have... Put in a first round by 12 and 4. Ton of coach XP. Good thing I don't even need to use it. What a performance from Quentin Flowers. Nearly 5,000 yards passing, 46 touchdowns, 12 interceptions with a 70% pass completion percentage. That was redundant. Uh, rushing Leonard Fournette, pretty good season. 1,434 yards, 9 touchdowns. That's extremely solid. LaMichael Maxwell, 9 touchdowns. Quentin Flowers, 5 rushing touchdowns. Good fella. Three 1,000-yard receivers in Marquise Lee, Allen Robinson, and Cedric Wilson, who also had 13 touchdowns. Allen Robinson had nine. Good work from the boys. Sacks, uh, you know, numbers. Miles Jack had 128 tackles, which led the team. Tackles for loss would be 12 from Howard Crosby. Quarterback sacks, 10.5 from Yannick Ngakwe, 7.5 from Howard Crosby. Interceptions, 5 from Jalen Ramsey, 4 from Miles Jack. Fumble recoveries, or forced fumbles, I should say. Sherman Lowe forced three. A couple of players had two. And then two recoveries for Sherman Lowe led the team. I see one defensive touchdown. It's Jalen Ramsey as we are second in the NFL in offensive yards. What about defensive yards? First? Sixth. Okay. Yearly awards. Jacoby Brissett wins MVP. Quentin Flowers at number two. Uh, Evan Bowanko. That's an odd name. Uh, maybe he knows Luke Bowanko. How I just flip-flopped on that name. AFC Offensive Player of the Year is Quinton Flowers. Show many more Jags. Leonard Fournette. Defensive Player of the Year, Dorian Forte. This guy must be some kind of a beast because he won Defensive Rookie of the Year last year. Miles Jack in there at number four. Offensive Rookie of the Year, Daniel Friedman. LaMichael Maxwell at four. Brian Bryant at eight. And Roy Favorite at ten. Back of quarterback. Didn't even play. Okay. No Jaguars because why would there be? And we do have a bit of XP to spend for a lot of these players as we have a bunch of Pro Bowl players, including, but not limited to, Cedric Wilson. I'm just going to guess by XP. Quentin Flowers, of course, was second in the MVP. Uh, and he won, fuck, in Christ. He won AFC Offensive Player of the Year. So that's a ton of XP. I want to click on it and see what exactly he's credited with. 
Uh, QB of the year, second Pro Bowl, passer rating leader. That's a ton of XP. Bunch of offensive linemen made the Pro Bowl. Cam Robinson, Light, Stanley, and Sanford all made the Pro Bowl. So that's awesome. Defensively, uh, again, not a whole ton of XP. I'm noticing this as a trend in rebuilds that not a whole lot of XP goes to defensive players, and I'm not sure why. It, it, we used to get some, but not anymore. I'm going to go ahead and use this XP, though, and see you guys for our divisional matchup. This is the team for the playoffs. Looks really, really good. Bunch of players have gotten upgraded out the wazoo, including Cedric Wilson. Quinton Flowers up to a 98 overall. The entire offensive line is sick. Defensively, things are not quite as good, but things are still quite good. Howard Crosby probably should be the number one. Let's go ahead and make that adjustment. AJ Boye has been really quiet in this, to be fair. But uh, again, I don't really trust Madden Sim. And, but when I say trust, I mean, I don't think they're accurate at all um it's just not because uh I, none of the stats are ever accurate like you'll see uh you know like two guys on your team lead the team in interceptions just always linebackers and then you know maybe a cornerback or a safety will have a few and then the rest just zero it's like all right but uh divisional playoff matchup is against the raiders to advance the conference championship should be able to do so and we do to face the 10 and 6 New England Patriots. Do I want to use any of this XP? Uh, it's a pretty inconsequential amount, to be fair. So, now, to advance to the Super Bowl, have to get through the New England Patriots, and we do exactly that. And now, it's the MVP versus the MVP runner-up, Jacoby Brissett and the New Orleans Saints versus Quentin Flowers and the Jacksonville Jaguars. Here we go. It's Super Bowl time. I mean, there's nothing else to talk about, all right? Nothing left. This is the team that's going to get it done. Back-to-back -back Super Bowl appearances. This time, we're going to Dallas. 96 overall against 96 overall. Can we get it done? The 12, I mean, this is as even as it gets. 12-4. and four, Same overall. Same record. I just said. Here we go. Out to an early 7-0 lead, but it looks like New Orleans will answer with a field goal. Now 10-3 in rapid-fire commentary mode, per usual, as New Orleans scores with another field goal and another. Can we please get points on the board? And we do with a touchdown. 17-9 here in the Super Bowl, but now things are all tied up going into the fourth quarter. 27-17, and uh, we are now going to jump into the game. Third and three, up by seven. One of the most important plays of the game. We're going to test out Quentin Flowers and see if his wheels are legit. We're definitely going to run. Here he is, Quentin Flowers. Actually, go upfield. No, we're still running. All right, duck it out of bounds. First down, ran out of bounds, which means uh, clock doesn't keep running. Like, I've never played football before. I clearly don't know how time management works. In case you were curious, game options. It is on all Madden. Ball carry special moves auto. Let's do manual, please. I'm on a second account. So that's why that's a thing, but uh, I want to I want to run more because it's a it's a mobile quarterback, and that's just, I want to do it. All right, here we go, coming out in five wide. We're just stepping up in the pocket. Oh my goodness! Show off the wheels, please don't fumble. Please do not fumble the ball. All right, New Orleans calls this last timeout. You you imagine I fumble the ball there? Oh, that would have been poor. All right, second and two. Probably should hand the ball off to Leonard Fournette. We're gonna stay passing. And by passing, I mean running. They put on a QB spy. All right, that's not great. But uh, we are two seconds away from winning a Super Bowl after this clock goes all the way down on third and three. So we pretty much got it. Third and three, we could easily take a knee. But Leonard Fournette's going to get the carry. And then Leonard Fournette to the outside. Ball him over. Oh, he's fumbled the ball. Oh, no, he's fumbled the ball. Oh, no. Okay, okay, okay. Everyone calm down, all right? Super Bowl champions. Thank God Kenny Vaccaro. Stepped out of bounds. Took him horns. He's looking out for me. Uh, that would have been a bad way to tie it up. They they got, they got, forced the, the ball out there. That was not good. <laughs> that could have been really bad. That could have been, like, really, really bad. Who's wearing number two? What kind of a beast is what? It's low. It's our strong safety's wearing number two. And he was drafted as an outside linebacker. Also wearing number two, I guess. I didn't change that. That's pretty ridiculous. That's pretty hardcore, honestly. We're going to give that to him. But Super Bowl champions, we've done it in year number four. Quentin Flowers ran a little bit. We almost, you know, lost the game a little bit when we could have easily won it. 
Like people are like, oh, gameplays. Like you watch my 49ers franchise if you want gameplays. Leonard Fournette wins MVP. Uh, the Super Bowl as he fumbled the ball in the final second, which almost could have lost us the game. I thought it was going to give him MVP. Is it not? Usually it pops up. Yeah, I guess it didn't pop up. But uh, show the podium, please, so I can quit stalling and we can get out of here. There it is. Leonard Fournette, Quentin Flowers, Allen Robinson, and probably Jalen Ramsey. I can't be certain. Is that Miles Jack? It's Miles Jack. Okay. Where's Jalen Ramsey? As Aaron Allen Robinson's jerking off the air. That's certain. Something else. But uh, yeah. Super Bowl champions. Leonard Fournette maybe just dabbed. I'm not really sure what's going on. Thank you guys so much for watching, though. <laughs> and I will see you in the next one. Take it easy. They call me the Ramblin' Man. That's that's a thing. They they don't. But they could. That's a cool nickname. Shit don't run well.